Well, today you're going to learn something about raising puppies. Uh, Doberman puppies for us, uh, but any kind of puppies, you'll probably learn something about dogs in this video. And uh, Dr. Paula is going to do it. I'm going to, uh, uh, she's buying me a little time because we're going uh, down to Florida and uh, we're going on an iguana hunt and a uh, a wild hog hunt. Uh, we'll probably stop by and see uh, Donnie FL's facility and probably run into uh, uh, Zach Matthews, all people that are important in our air gun industry. But today is about Dobermans. Let me tell you how important a dog can be. I'm out of the military. And I know a lot of people out of first responders, police, fire, whatever. And uh, they've come out with post-traumatic syndrome disorder. We call it PTSD. They, me, have seen some things you really just don't want to see. And it's a little hard to shake those things. So uh, uh, they stay in their homes. They stay in their cars. They don't like to meet people. The list goes on and on. And uh, so we found that when they have a service dog, that uh, they get out of those houses, they come out of their shells, and they overcome PTSD. A good service dog is welcome anywhere. Uh, hotels, motels, restaurants, office buildings. And uh, we've been doing this now for about eight years. And uh, I think over 100 puppies are out there uh, doing their job, and that gives us great pleasure. We've got a few of them here. We've had as many as four adult females here, presently two, and we just had a litter go. But you need to know, they're born at a certain temperature. They need to be maintained at a certain temperature. I'm sure you've seen a, a chickens with uh, light bulbs inside their, their uh, uh, last in case. Puppies aren't too different. You're going to learn something today. And then this is our 80th video. Following it will be those fantastic hunts. I've got some brand new air guns you haven't seen. A Hooban. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see this thing. And the Hatson Factor. And a uh, FX uh, Crown. Just to name a few. So a whole lot of good stuff is coming. And I can't wait till you see it. Well, hello. Let me introduce you to Little Miss No Name. <laughs> we just had a litter of puppies, and this is the last one that we're going to deliver to the customer that lives in Georgia on our way to Florida on an iguana hunt. And we don't name our puppies, we let them, and they're still, and she loves to give kisses. Oh. But she will be adopted in a couple weeks. This is what a lot of people call a birthing box, but we call it a hospital. And down here, on this floor, if you'll notice, this rail is off the floor by about four or five inches. And this is because when the puppy is small and it's laying down here, sometimes mom rolls over and doesn't realize that the puppy's behind her. So this rail protects her and protects the puppy so that she doesn't suffocate that puppy and lay on it. If you'll notice right here, we have an opening that mom comes in and out. And as the puppies get bigger, I have three pieces that I start putting in here so the puppies can't get out and mom can sit out in the open by herself. I also have a monitor right here that's it's actually a baby monitor and I have the other piece that sits by my bed so that I can hear the puppies all night long. I also have a camera right here and this one is by Wi-Fi so that if I'm out at a grocery store I can turn that on and make sure that the puppies are all doing good. But this little girl 
is doing great. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> if you would like to know my other fun adventures that go on, Russ and I just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary, and look what I got. This is a 2004 SSR. It's a convertible, a hardtop convertible. Boy, is it fun, and it is fast, and it has a Corvette engine in it. Now let's go inside and look at our bigger Dobermans. Sit. And they are service dogs. They make great, great service dogs. First responders have them, but you have to have dogs that are very obedient. So we work on training with them. And they will sit until I say a certain word and then they can get the treat. Okay. Okay. Good girls. One of the tricks that we do is putting something in their mouth and not allowing them to eat until we tell them they can. Abby, no. 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 Abby. Okay. Good girl. Part of the Doberman training is the discipline of them staying until the owner tells them to move. We're working on this one with Mercy. Mercy likes to shake. Good girl. And this is the hardest one. Stay. 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 Okay. Good girl. So this is all the fun that we have with Dobermans, not just raising the puppies, but playing with our big babies too. One of the routines that we do daily when we go out to get ready to go outside is they both sit or lay until I say that it's time. I step out here and I take a look. I make sure that no one's coming. We do not have an underground fence or anything, but they know where our property line is at. But when two Dobermans come running, running out the door, if somebody's walking by, it tends to scare them, so we don't want to do that. So I make sure that they sit. Mercy, sit. Stay. in the grass so she doesn't quite know what to do with it there she's gonna go potty good girl but we keep them out of the grass until they've had their first set of uh, shots at about six weeks because there's too many things in the grass that they can get um, infections on one of the big ones is parvo so we try to keep them out of the grass but she's had that first set of shots so she's learning to go potty now well, as you can see, we raise Dobermans and we have fun with them. We have two kinds of Dobermans that Abby was the European Doberman and Mercy was our American Doberman. The Europeans, they say, are a little blacker and the red is a little redder. Now you look at me and say red, Yes, this is considered red, even though it's a brown color because it's a brown and rust um, is what their color is. So we call it red and rust and a black and a rust color. Um, they're a little bit bigger than the American dobes. They're a little bit stronger and they say they even live a little bit longer. 
Um, we make sure that they're born in a very clean birthing box or hospital and they're in there, uh, I keep them in there for the six weeks, but the first few weeks we have to have a heat lamp uh, connected and heaters going because when they come out of mother, they're, they're warm from being inside mom. And when they're born, that air is cold and we have to keep their body temperature up so that um, they don't die. If they get too cold, they won't nurse and we've had some friends that have lost their first couple litters because they didn't have a clue that they had to keep those body temperatures up on those puppies. I give them frequent baths and pedicures um, basically so that they don't tear up my floors but also as they're feeding on mom the natural sensation is they're feeding is they move their paws on her and those claws scratch her up and that can cause mom not to want the puppies to eat off of her. We train our dogs not to bark, not to bite, um, and we don't definitely don't want them to kill anyone. So that's what happens through our training is we teach them. We don't need a big muzzle like this because in our training, we're teaching them not to do those kinds of things. Dobermans are very loving dogs. They call them Velcro dogs because all they want to do is touch you. If they can touch you, they're satisfied. Um, as I said earlier, many of our Dobermans have been trained to be service dogs. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of people out there, especially the military and the Navy and the Marines and the Air Force, that have seen things you and I haven't seen and they come home with what's called PTSD, post-traumatic syndrome disorder. And if they can have an animal that is next to them that goes everywhere they go, that keeps them relaxed, um, keeps the anxiety down, and it helps these servicemen to uh, be able to live a normal life. So, I know many of you are waiting for Dr. Russ and his next air rifle adventures and that will be coming up, but I wanted to share with you one of, our, one of my activities that I enjoy doing besides air rifles. So please, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, give me comments, I will answer your comments and your questions that you have, and give me more thumbs up than you give Dr. Russ. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this video with our Doberman puppies.